Hi, my name is Basir. In this video, we'll be learning Chapter 2 Polynomials from Grade 10 CBSC Syllabus. We'll learn what a polynomial is, we will learn what is the degree of a polynomial, and we'll learn what type of polynomials we have based on its degree. We will learn how to find the value of a polynomial, and then lastly, we'll learn how to find zero of a polynomial. So there are quite a few things that we are that we will learn in this uh, video. So let's get started. What is a polynomial? A polynomial is an algebraic expression in which the variables involved can have only non-negative integral powers. We know that integers, which we denote by the letter Z, they are from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, if I remove the negative integers here, we are left with zero and the positive integers. So the power of a variable can be zero or the positive integers. Now, <clears throat> this one, 3x squared plus 5x plus 4, that's a polynomial because the <clears throat> variable here, which is x, it has a power 2, a power 1, which are positive integers. So obviously this is a polynomial. Now, a polynomial is represented by the letter small p and then since we have variable x here in this polynomial, I can write p of x. So this is p of x, the variable p of x, the polynomial p of x is 3x squared plus 5x plus 4. And then this is also a polynomial, 4z squared plus 5z plus 10, that's also a polynomial. And since this polynomial is in the variable z, we can write this as p of z. So p of z is equal to 4z squared plus 5z plus 10, that's also a polynomial. And then this we can write it as p of t, because this is a polynomial in variable t, I can write this as p of t. Now let us learn what is not a polynomial. <coughs> x power 1, that is not a polynomial. Why? Because the, po the power of the variable x is minus 1, a negative integer. So this cannot be a polynomial. Do you think root x is a polynomial? No, root x is also not a polynomial. Why? Because root x, when you remove the square root, you have to keep the power 1 by 2, the power half. And then this 1 by 2 is not a is not a positive integer. So obviously, if you have a variable in the root, then it is not a polynomial. Likewise, if someone say ask you, is root 5x a polynomial? No, this is not going to be a polynomial because I have a, a variable x inside the square root. So this is not a polynomial. Because if I remove the square root here, then I have to keep a power. 1 by 2, right? So this is not a polynomial. Do you think root 5x, is this a polynomial? Yes, this one is a polynomial. Why? Because the power of x is 1 here, a positive integer. So this is a polynomial. Now the root that you see, it is not on the variable x. The root that you see is not on the variable x. It is on a constant term. So that is fine with us. So that, that this is again a polynomial. And if you have the variable in the denominator also then it is not going to be a polynomial. Why? Let us see this. 1 by x square. Is that a polynomial? No, it is not a polynomial because 1 by x square you can write it as x to the power of minus 2. I believe you are aware of this uh, law of exponent. 1 by x power n can be written as x to the power of minus n. So plus n if it goes to the numerator that becomes minus n. And since the power is negative, this is not a polynomial. So always understand, if the variable is in the denominator, it's not going to be a polynomial. So let me write here, 1 by x is not a polynomial. Likewise, 1 by x to x plus 5, no, that's not, that is also not a polynomial. Because you have the variable x in the denominator, this is not a polynomial, not a polynomial. Now, let us learn how to find degree of a Polynomial. We are going to learn about polynomials in one variable here, only in one variable. So let us say I have a polynomial like this, 5x to the power of 2 plus 5x plus 2. <clears throat> or let me expand this a little bit. Let us say I have 4x cubed here and then let us say I have 
x power 4 also here x power 4 plus 4x cube plus 5x square plus 5x plus 2 do you think that's a polynomial yes that is a polynomial because the variable that you see it has a positive power the variable it has a positive power the variable it has a positive power the variable it has a positive power so that's a polynomial and what is the degree of this polynomial the degree of a polynomial is the highest power of the variable the highest power of the variable in this case is 4. So the degree of this variable is going to be 4. The degree of the variable is 4. The degree of the polynomial is nothing but the highest power of the variable. Now based on the degree of a polynomial, we can categorize a polynomial as a linear polynomial, quadratic polynomial, cubic polynomial. Now what is a linear polynomial? If the degree of a polynomial is 1, we call such a polynomial as a linear polynomial. Let us say I have a polynomial like this, 2x plus 5. That's a linear polynomial because the highest power of the variable is 1 here. If the so, if the highest power of the variable is nothing but the degree of the, of the polynomial, right? So, the degree of the polynomial is 1. I call such a polynomial as a linear polynomial. So, this is a linear polynomial. So in general, this 2 can be anything here, right? It can be 3x plus 4 also. Instead of writing 2x plus 5, I can have something like 3x plus 4 also. In general, in place of 3, let me write in place of 3 let me write a and then this constant term can also be anything here in this case so the general form of a linear polynomial is ax plus b the general form of a linear polynomial is ax plus b a quadratic polynomial is a polynomial whose degree is 2. I told you degree is nothing but the highest power of the variable. Now, this variable x, it has a power 2 and this variable x, it has a power 1. I don't see a variable here. I just see a constant term. But then you can still assume that there is a variable whose power is 0. Obviously, 10 x power 0 is nothing but 10 itself. Why? Because x power 0 is 1 and then 10 into 1 is nothing but 10 itself. All right. So now the highest power of the variable x is 2 here, which means the degree of this polynomial is 2. And if the degree of a polynomial is 2, you call such a polynomial as a quadratic polynomial. So 2x square plus 4x plus 10 is a quadratic polynomial. Now, in place of this 2, I could have had a 3 also. In place of this 4, I could have had 5 also. And then in place of this 10, I could have had any number, let us say 4, right? So, in general, let me write these things as A, B, C. So, let me write, re replace that by A and then let me replace that by B and then let me replace this by C. So, the general form of a quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c. So, ax square plus bx plus c is the general form of a quadratic polynomial. So, remember, I told you in place of a, b and c, you can have any numbers. You can have any real number. Now, what is a real number? A real number is actually a superset of all these numbers. You know, the, the, the smallest set that we have is, is the natural numbers. Natural numbers, we also call them as counting numbers because we obviously count numbers by making counts the number of things by making use of the numbers 1, 2, 3, so on, right? So, natural numbers are also known as counting numbers. Now, if you add 0 to the set of natural numbers, you get a little bigger set which we call as whole numbers. Whole numbers that start from 0, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Those are the whole numbers. Now, to this set of whole numbers, if you add the negative numbers, you end, you end up getting a little bigger set, which is known as set of integers. Integers, they go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So, in integers, you have minus negative numbers, the positive numbers, and the 0. Now, to this set of integers, if you add the fractions, you get a little bigger set known as a set of rational numbers. 
And then in chapter 1, I taught you what are irrational numbers. Now, a collection of all these numbers are known as real numbers. Real numbers. So, A, B, C, can any can be any real number here. It can be any real number here. But then, in a quadratic polynomial, remember, the coefficient of the first term, x square, the coefficient of x square cannot be equal to 0. Why? Because if the coefficient of x square becomes 0, if this becomes 0, then obviously 0 into x square would be 0. So the x square term, it vanishes. When the x square term vanishes, the degree of the polynomial, it gets reduced to 1. Because now I would have the highest power as 1. It, it ceases to be a, a quadratic polynomial because the degree of the polynomial is not 2 anymore. And that's the reason we say a cannot be equal to 0. In a quadratic polynomial, the general form of a quadratic polynomial is ax square plus bx plus c. The first, the coefficient of the first term x square, it cannot be zero. It cannot be zero. Now, what is a cubic polynomial? A cubic polynomial is a polynomial whose degree is 3. So, I have written a polynomial for you and this polynomial is I can denote this polynomial as p of x because we represent the polynomials by the letter small p and then since this, this polynomial is in the variable x, I am writing x here. Now, what is the highest power of x here? The power of x is 3 here, here the power of x is 2, here the power of x is 1 and here the power of x is 0. The highest power of the variable is 3. So, we say that the degree of this polynomial is 3. What do you think would be the general form of a cubic polynomial? What do you think would be the general form of a cubic polynomial? In this place, in the coefficient of x cube, I can write this as a and then I can write this as b and then this can be anything. So this can be, let me denote this by c and then this can be anything. Let me denote this by d. So ax cube plus bx square plus cx plus d, that's the general form of a cubic polynomial. So a cubic polynomial is a polynomial whose degree is 3. Now let us learn how to find the value of a polynomial. Let us say I have a polynomial like this p of x is equal to 4x square plus 5x plus 1. Now let us say someone asked me to find out what is p of 2. If I have to find out the value of p of 2, I have to substitute x. In place of x, I have to substitute 2. So I have to put x as 2 here, right? Put x is equal to 2. So in place of x, let me write 2 here. And then again, in place of x, let me write 2 here. So what happens when I do that? 2 square is going to be 4. 5 into 2 is going to be 10. 4 into 4 is 16, 16 plus 10 plus 1, 16 plus 10 is 26, 26 plus 1 is 27. So for the polynomial 4x square plus 5x plus 1, p of 2 is 27. So how do you find value of a polynomial? You just substitute, substitute the value. Let's say you have to find out p of let's say you have to find out what is p of 1. Then in place of x, you have to put 1. If you have to find out the find out what p of 3 is, then in place of x, you have to put 3. That's it. Right. Now, let us see how to find 0 of a polynomial. Let us say I have a polynomial here, 2x plus 3. Let me denote this polynomial by p of x, because this polynomial is in variable x, I'm denoting this by p of x. If we have to find out 0 of a polynomial, we first equate the given polynomial with 0. So the given polynomial 2x plus 3, I'm equating that by 0. And then I'm going to find the value of the variable. How do you find the value of this of the variable? Plus 3, if I transpose it to the right hand side, it becomes minus 3. And then 2 is multiplying on the left hand side. So 2 would be dividing on the right hand side. So minus 3 by 2 is 0 of the polynomial 2x plus 3. So minus 3 by 2 is the 0 of the polynomial 2x plus 3. Now you would be wondering why am I saying that minus 3 by 2 is 0 of the polynomial 2x plus 3. See here. Now this is our polynomial. 2x plus 3 is the polynomial. In 
place of x, if I substitute minus 3 by 2, let us see what happens when I substitute uh, the value of x as minus 3 by 2. Now, in place of x, if I substitute minus 3 by 2, then obviously this 2 in the numerator, this 2 in the denominator, they cancel out and then I'm left with minus 3 plus 3. And then minus 3 plus 3, they cancel out and we end up getting 0. And since for the value x minus 3 by 2, I'm getting the value of this polynomial as 0, we say that minus 3 by 2 is 0 of this polynomial. If I substitute minus 3 by 2 in place of x, the entire polynomial is becoming 0 and that is the reason I say that minus 3 by 2 is the 0 of this polynomial. Okay, And we'll, we'll uh, stop this video here. In the next video, we'll, talk, we'll uh, learn what is geometrical meaning of the zeros of a polynomial. We will see the geometrical representation of a linear polynomial. We'll see the geometrical representation of a quadratic polynomial and the geometrical representation of a cubic polynomial. It was nice teaching you. I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, goodbye.